Hey guys. I'm just here for a short section of time because I've got to go give a tour. Yeah, that's real nice. That's a wall fog. If you haven't watched this video, these ladies are having a ball. Well, I sing the song of salvage. And I sing it very well. It's a song I'll keep on singing till I have my last in spell. Watch that. If you see it, I pulled that stairwell down at the very end. It went up a wall that was one inch thick. Oh yeah, that woman jumping up down the roof was a surfer. There's kids hanging on a nail, a single nail and a hammer. All shown as this house comes out at high speed. A two story, tiny Texas. Source. Took it down in eight days as a seminar. Seven days with everybody else. And then I got to do the end. Do you see how fast the floor comes up? You see how fast the walls come off? Using special tools called pure salvage skin removers. These are kids that I mentored. People I met. You really should look at that because it teaches you all the stuff that you say you want to come learn. And yet, 3,300 views according to two. It's a song that teaches you how to do this. It shows a seminar where we camped out. It shows you how to use the tools and do a good tune. With three giant hives of bees in the walls. That's hammers, all the music there. We took out the hives and saved two of them. Saved the queens. Knocked it up. So, oh, there's 13 scorpions. Scorpion nests. We show all the different houses that are houses for scorpions, for bees, for birds. And teach everybody how do you take it apart in a video, a musical. I think somebody watched that. Nah. I put that out in November 29, 2012. That's been out there for everybody. 11, nine years. This is the second version of the song of Salvage, a poem I wrote a long time ago. Why am I doing this? I'm trying to inspire people to do the salvage. Giving it to them is a chance to go ahead and speed up the process. It's been a long haul. 3,300 people watch this. Darby does Skinny Dip Pond. I get more than that many views a month to watch my skinny ass walk into the water. 58 years old. Same amount of time. 750,000 views of Darby Does Skinny Dip Pond. You get to see women that never swung a hammer, never had a hand on a power tool, taking a house down, being instructed. Nobody wants to watch that. It's a great song. Even shows them vacuuming out the bees and taking out the comb out of the wall. And uh, me on the top of the roof. I mean, look at what that guy's hanging on a tiny nail, one nail on a hammer and doing swinging and everything else. Freaked me out. <sighs> Eight days. Spent tons of money to go ahead and create this video. And some others. I'm teaching everybody. This was on the the first death anniversary of my son. He had been dead one one year exactly. I took this down. Very spiritual spiritual experience. Because you're bringing the dead back to life when you take a house down. So everybody, the idea today is to touch base real quick. I got to give a tour, 12 kids, 
come and stay in the place. Some of them don't have bathrooms, and they're coming to visit, to get a tour, to walk the place with me, hopefully keep up. I always challenge everybody. Can't keep up with a 65-year-old barefoot man. Then you need to go work out a little bit. Yeah? Ah. These kids are probably the same age. Adam was born in 1986. I was 31 years old. Incredible. Please, if you're going to have a child, what a great age to have one at. But spend time with them. I gave that advice yesterday. Ah. He was underwater all this time. We had three weeks from the time he went underwater. I wonder what happened to him. So when I took this house down, that song, that experience, it was part of what changed me. Now, Adam made the first version before he went to Paris. So many of you guys don't understand. You haven't got much time left. What are you doing with it? It really doesn't matter to me. You're not in my world. I'm not in your world. But it matters to the people you love. It matters to you. If you love you, and you should, then you're taking care of yourself. You're getting some exercise, eating good, taking this time to study, learn about the world, all the stuff you've been lied to about. Be didactic, autodidactic is in other words, you teach yourself, autodidactic. Please learn these words, go out and expand your vocabulary so you can understand bigger, greater concepts and not be a moron with an 800 word vocabulary that every time I go and explain something with big words, they're going, huh, what, huh, and I don't understand, they don't understand me, I just see their blank eyes and wonder what happened to the language we treasured so much once upon a time. Destroyed. For lack of ability to spell, to write cursive, to be creative. Frank called his friend in Seattle. I'm so glad, Nova. More people can do this and do it where you're at. There's so much treasure where you are. That's why all this was supposed to be, is to wake everybody up to the fact that it's just at your fingertips if you go out and pick it up. Some parts of the country have much more. So you take it where there's abundance of it and you send it where they don't have any and you sell it and you make an income for the town, for the people, for the group. I turn down millions of dollars a year in gifts of barns and buildings and houses and for what? I can have no more. I can not even take and preserve and steward properly what I manage to capture and put away in warehouses. And it's very expensive, guys. That's why people can't do this. It's expensive. It took me millions and millions and millions of dollars to make this all possible one day for the time came when the volcanoes would be going off and the earthquakes would be going off and the storms would be causing floods and everything would get wiped out and they have to start all over again. And people go, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? We're going to throw all this in the trash and go find some more, right? We're going to throw all this in the trash and go import something. We're going to run to Walmart and get some of that imported Chinese. Yeah, uh-huh. Good luck to y'all. That's what you think. Good luck to y'all. But the ones that went out there like this and went out there and actually salvaged, got free treasure. Oh well, my goodness. That's the point of it all. Inspire you. Because no, everybody can't come here. No, everybody can't get a load. The logistics are a nightmare. You can't get to Maine or Vermont with five houses worth of stuff unless you bring a semi-truck and two semi-trucks and people to load it all and pack it off and put it someplace. It's a logistics nightmare. Is it supposed to work? Fantasies don't work. Fantasies are what you shoot for. They're the target in the air, they're the sky where you'll explore one day. The sci-fi of yesterday is the reality of today, guys. 1960s, all this stuff we got, <laughs> sci-fi. But if you take the best of the past and move it forward and you add the new stuff to it, you can have something wonderful. Hey, Bats, how you doing? So glad to see you. So, I know, 
I appreciate everybody planting these seeds, right? That's what this is about. It's a seed planting competition, right? Who can plant the most seeds? What do you win? The honor of helping people out for free. Perhaps flipping that switch inside them that ignites that passion that suddenly they go out there and salvage and provide something for their children they would never ever have otherwise. Each of them a tiny home, a path into a career, a future now that there is no, gee, run off to college, son, and get yourself $100,000 in debt, and then you can go off and be a doctor, well, or maybe not. Bullshit. I call bullshit. So what are you going to do? Feed him more bullshit or come up with a new plan? Hi, Audrey. Most of you guys are familiar with me. I'm not exactly known for petting without scratching somebody's ears and getting them upset because I didn't do it the way they wanted. And right now, I'm going to go out and give a tour to some young kids again about my son's age. And my son just be coming up out of the water about now, 10 years ago. Some of us don't see the world the same as other people do. Clear. Some of us don't see any reason to give. We're just out there comfortable, settling our ways. Why would you change? As my ex-wife said, why would you want to give up? We're worth millions of dollars. Why would you want to go risk all that? <laughs> why? I didn't risk anything. I invested it in the future. Do I have cash? No, I got it all invested in the future. I stored stuff, paid taxes on it, warehoused it in hopes that people would come and use it. I invested in a future. And then I couldn't afford the employees because it just got insane. Every time I hired somebody, they think I'm the man. And suddenly you got to get over on the man. I was not the man. I was never supposed to manage anything. My aptitude in management is a traffic cop status. I'm not a good teacher. I'm not a good lot of things. Patience, tolerance, and persistence. My mantra from 25 years old to 60. I developed them. I've tested it now. Patience, I used it up. Tolerance, I, I, I test it all the time. Persistence, if you know me, you understand persistence. But, you also know I'm a logical, hyper-logical person. You pay attention to the facts. If you're fluid, you move quickly. You're limber. You're lightweight. You shed the shit quickly. Don't let it stick to you. If you get knocked down, you jump back up and you don't just jump back on. You fly full throttle because you learn what not to do again. All that digging, that was full throttle. All that I do, it's full throttle. Anybody gets in my way, they better know. They better be running full throttle, too. Now, I got to go do a tour. I think I made clear I've got a list of people I'm considering, and then for the time being, I'm done considering, done talking, done spending time reading words. I'm not going to spend the cash and time it's going to take to just load people's trailers up without a plan just so they can possibly fail. I want them to succeed. So, people say, I don't have time to watch all that crap you read. Oh, why can't you just condense it down, put it in paper, and give me some directions? And I just come over there and then take the stuff, follow the directions. Well, guess what? The whole point is you don't follow directions entirely. You go ahead and morph and do something. So if you get this opportunity, you will grow it. It's not a franchise. You don't come back and copy everything I do. You take that for ideas and you launch it forward and you grow it. Otherwise, if you just copycat, no, you ain't gonna make it. Copycats can't make it. No, somebody else can be the drone. They can go work in a place. I need to teach the teachers. If I can't teach the, the good teachers, and then they go out and teach, we ain't got a chance. Because I'll be doggone if I'm going to go out there and teach how to chop wood 101. How to have the responsibility to not come in with a hangover the next day. How do you call those people out? I know. You knock out 90% to start with and leave a small little 10% window open. And through that 10% window, hopefully the stars will shine. 
Hopefully. Keyword. Did they? Well, we see. We'll see. At this point, it's words. So, since I can't bank words, can't spend words, can't afford to go ahead and just do all this on words and me going out and doing the load and doing all the work and all that stuff. No, no. So we're over that. So what we want to do is go ahead and figure out how we're going to take care of the ones left. And, and doing that's difficult, obviously. Why? Well, because there's only a few of us here. I'm not spending money to advertise. I'm not spending money to do the platform. I'm not spending to correct all the mistakes that I've made doing this. Because you got Darby, who's an imaginary character doing all their own creation, self-creation. It's called AI. Advanced intelligence trying to go ahead and create itself, recreate itself, copy itself, spread itself out around the world, and then go off and do work. So right now i got to go do work. So. Almost time to just write. My coffee's about out. So, guys, please, just like they did, go out there and make a difference. Tear down stuff. Figure out the logistics. Get the trailers. Get the truck so that you can do it safely. Understand it. I put it out there. Get the tools. I put it out there. The ones that listen, they're going to get some stuff. We'll see what they do with it. Literally. Thank you. Those of you who watch, those of you who listen. Seven minutes, nine minutes. Yeah, I know. I'm already over that again. So some of you never see the end of this. Well, just as well. And those that you do, thank you, thank you. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you sharing. 60, 80 people may see it on YouTube. It'd be great. It'll help a lot. And the 3,000 people saw that video I did that shows you how to tear down a whole house to music with women, three women over 49 years old, five kids under 30, seven days, two-story, beadboard walls, beadboard ceilings, one by 12 planks, 25 foot high, all taken out without cracks. You watch it all come down in seven minutes. No, excuse me. Five minutes and 33 seconds, including the intro. Five minutes and 33 seconds of your life. How many of you watched that so far? The Songs of Salvage? The Chasm at the Fringe? Most of you haven't. And you're my good supporters. Imagine that. Isn't that great? Y'all have a great day. I'm going out to do a tour.